Welcome back. Patriot Network TV talking about energy today. Great to see you. God bless everybody out there who's watching. Uh, we had a wonderful set of responses and comments from the last uh, episode that I did on energy. And quick footnote, several people wrote in and said you can't burn coal in a car. Yes, you can. It's a process called coal gasification. You can also burn natural gas. The tar sands are easily converted at 35 bucks a barrel from tar sand into oil. Current retail price of light sweet crude is 105 a barrel. So it's, you know, that's 70 bucks we can put in our pockets. It, it's a good thing. But the Obama administration constantly says, well, we're facing all these things that, you know, who knew that we'd have the Gulf oil spill and who knew that we'd get these hurricanes and who knew that, you know, Joplin, Missouri would blow up and, you know, all this stuff. They act like none of it's their fault. Their energy policy, their anti-energy policy is destroying the U.S. economy. The most recent job numbers, kicking unemployment up to 9.2%. U6, unemployment, underemployment, long-term discouraged worker at 16.2%. This is the direct result of the policies of the Obama administration. It has nothing to do with, oh, we're going into the wind, we're fighting a heavy wind. Here is a editorial article, and this is written by a very uh, bright fellow named Ben Crystal. And the title of the article is The Assassination of Old King Cole. And this is about what the Obama administration is doing to the price of electricity. Now, you remember candidate Obama, when he was running for the office of the presidency, said, and I quote, under my policy, the price of electricity will necessarily skyrocket. Now, they are after coal. And not only are they after coal, the irony here is just too rich to, uh, to, to avoid. In the middle of recovery summer two, they're out to destroy 400,000 jobs in the coal industry. Now, energy in the United States employs currently about 9 million people directly and about another six, you know, five, six million folks indirectly, depending on how you want to count, you know, who's actually an indirect worker in the energy industry. The interesting thing to keep in mind is if we would open up the coal that we have in Utah, the coal that we have in Alaska, the coal that we have in Eastern Montana. If we would go after, and by the way, those are all low sulfur. If we would go after low sulfur coal in the United States for our power plants, we could provide a huge surplus of coal. The United States, and I showed you the slides a couple of times back, a few episodes back, you know, we've got 50% of the coal on earth and half the coal, we have 50% of the coal on earth, half that coal is in Alaska. We got a slurry line already built from Healy down to Seward. We got great ways to move it. And the Obama administration, instead of saying, gee, let's go out there and drill, baby, drill. Let's, you know, let's get the coal out of the ground. Let's go to the Green River formation and take that 1.9 trillion barrels of oil equivalent and get it out of the ground. Let's build new refineries. Let's build pipelines. Let's bring the pipeline down from Canada. Let's create jobs and employment now and make every single item in America cheaper. When you reduce regulation, the overall supply curve shifts to the right and it lowers the price and increases the quantity at every combination. And the Obama administration is doing just the exact, the exact opposite. As you remember from economics, downward sloping demand curve as price drops, quantity consumes, setters paribus goes up. So downward sloping demand curve, upward sloping supply curve, where they meet at equilibrium is a steady state, a homeostatic balance, but what we want to do by eliminating regulation and opening up more land to exploration, we can shift the supply curve to the right, making the price drop, increasing employment, decreasing the price per unit, increasing total tax revenue because more people will be working instead of on the dole, and we can basically have a series of win-win propositions. Now, Having said that, let me underscore something here. This story about these 400,000 jobs that the Obama administration is trying to kill in this article, this little editorial, The Assassination of King Cole, the important thing to ask yourself is, at what point are you going to have suffered enough with these policies that don't work, can't work, are not going to work? At what point are you going to say, that's it? I'm going to cut my losses here. I wanted to believe in this guy, but everything he does blows up in my face. Unemployment, 
currently in the United States is up around 16, 17 million people. The percentage of folks working is at the lowest point it's ever been since the Great Depression, 56%. And if you're male, it's been the man session. This has been particularly difficult on you. So if you want to get back to work, if you want to get back into a growing economy, if you want to see the value of your house come back, you're going to have to have energy. Energy is just a surrogate measure for gross domestic product. It's a surrogate measure for the unemployment number. If you make energy more expensive, unemployment goes up. If you make energy more expensive, the price of houses goes down. You cannot survive without energy. God bless you.